Hey Double Dip Babes! In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a very simple, classy manicure using products from Double Dip Nails. I have already prepped my nails how I would like for this dip powder manicure. If you do want your nails to last, make sure to follow a very good nail prep routine. I have a layer of gel polish and I'm just going to be applying the nail tips and dip powder over top of this. For normal dip powder nail prep, you would push back the cuticles of all of your nails. You would then file the shine away from the natural nail using a hand file and then apply dip bond. After doing those steps, you are ready to apply your dip powder. For today's manicure, we're going to be using this new dip powder color. This is number 20 and it's called beige pink. This is one of my favorite nude dip powder colors. To apply the dip powder, I'm going to be using the dip base, which is number 2. The activator, which is number 3. You can use the dip top coat, which is number 4, but I'm going to be using the no wipe gel top coat from the premium jelly liquid kit. You will also need a dusting brush. I am using the unicorn fluffy nail brush. A hand file to file and shape the nails. I'm going to be using an orange wood stick to clean up around my cuticles. You can also use a toothpick. And I'll be using these natural coffin nail tips. I have already picked out all of my nail tip sizes. To size your nail tips, you do want to make sure that the nail tip fits properly. Going from sidewall to sidewall, you don't want to have any gaps and you don't want the nail tip to be too big. This next step is optional, but I feel like it helps so much. I'm going to be using the professional portable e-file and the sanding band to file over top of the nail tips. As I said, I am using an arbor band and I'm going to be using a speed of about 6,000 RPMs and I'm just going to lightly file over the edge of the nail tip. This is the area where you glue it to your nail and doing this step just allows the nail tip to blend in with your natural nail a little bit better. This will try to prevent the ledge when doing dip powder nails with nail tips. Some people choose not to do this step and they'll blend in the nail tip after the nail tip is already applied to the nail, but personally since I don't want to file over top of the gel polish that I have, I'm just going to do this step before I apply the nail tips. I'm going to go ahead and file all of the other nail tips. So once all of the nail tips have been filed, I'm now ready to apply them. I'm going to be applying the nail tips using the dip base, which is number 2. I personally don't find any issues gluing my nail tips down with this product, but feel free to use a nail tip glue instead. I'm going to go ahead and place some of the dip base on the back of the nail tip and glue it down onto the nail. When doing this, you want to make sure to push down firmly to avoid having any air bubbles underneath the nail tip. I'm going to go ahead and apply all of the other nail tips. After all of the nail tips have been glued into place, I'm going to take these nail tip cutters and I'm going to go ahead and cut down some of the length for the nail tips. You can also use nail clippers, but I find this much easier. I am going to be doing some almond nails, so I'm making sure to leave a little bit of room for shaping. Here are the nails after the nail tips have been cut down. I'm also going to take some nail clippers and cut down the corners of the nails. As I said, I am going to be doing some almond shaped nails and it would take a very long time to file the almond shape if I did not cut the corners. When doing this, you want to make sure not to overcut the nail to keep a good straight almond shape.
After cutting the corners, I'm going to go ahead and take the hand file and I'm going to file the nails into the perfect almond shape. I personally find that almond shaped nails is one of the most difficult nail shapes to achieve, so I'll give you a little bit of tips for shaping the almonds. I personally like to start on the side walls of the nail to establish the width of the almond nail. Some beginners tend to leave the almond nails a little bit wide at the corners of the nail and in my opinion I like the almond nails when they're a little bit on the thinner side so I do like to establish the width of the nail before shaping the almond. The next step is to go ahead and round out the sides from the corner all the way down to the point of the nail. Before doing this step, you may want to establish the center of the nail. You can easily do this by flipping your hand over and drawing an imaginary line from the center of your finger all the way down to the tip of the nail. You do want to try to make sure to make the almond shape as straight as possible, otherwise your nails are going to look crooked. Almond shaped nails is one of the most difficult nail shapes for beginners because you can make the nails look very crooked. So the best advice I can give you is try to make the nails as straight as possible. I'm going to go ahead and shape all of the other nails. Here are the nails after they've all been shaped. At this point, you would want to file over top of the nail tip and blend it in with your natural nail if you haven't already. As you can see from the side, the nail tips do blend in very nicely with the nail. This will prevent having a really bad ledge when doing the dip powder application. I'm then going to take my dip powder color and go ahead and roll it in between my hands. This is going to evenly mix all of the dip powder ingredients. Here's what the dip powder looks like, it's one of my favorite nude dip powder colors. To apply the dip powder, I am going to be using the dip base, which is number 2. I'm going to go ahead and take my orange wood stick so I can clean around the cuticle areas of the nails. Because the nails are so flat, I do want to build a little bit of an apex to prevent the nails from breaking. The apex should go in the center of the nail right here. I'm going to start by applying the dip base right around the center of the nail all the way down to the free edge of the nail. This is the most crucial area when building the structure of your nails. I'm also not applying the dip base all the way to the sides of the nail. I'm going to dip into the dip powder and then tap away the excess. I'm going to repeat the exact same thing to all of the other nails. When building an apex with dip powder, you may not want to apply the dip base all the way down to the free edge of the nail when building the apex area. The reason for this is multiple layers of dip powder does make your nails thicker, so you may not want the tips of your nails to be very thick. Of course, you can file this down after the dip powder application. Normally, with nail enhancements, you don't want the tips of the nails to be thicker than the thickness of a credit card. This may cause the nails to look too bulky, as well as make it very difficult to pick small things off of the floor. After the first layer of dip powder has dried, I'm going to take the fluffy nail brush and dust away all of the excess dip powder. For the second layer of dip powder, I'm applying the dip base about halfway between the layer that I just did and the cuticle area of the nail. You should be working your way slowly down towards the cuticle area of the nail. I did dip the nail into the dip powder and tap away all of the excess dip powder. I'm going to repeat the exact same step for all of the other nails. If you're interested in purchasing any of the items that I'm using in this video, 
Everything will be linked down below in the description along with my discount code which will save you 20% off of your purchase. After the first layer has dried, I'm going to dust away all of the excess dip powder. This step is really important to prevent contaminating your liquids. For the third layer of dip powder, I am applying the dip base to the entire nail, making sure to cover from sidewall to sidewall all the way down to the free edge of the nail. After applying the dip base, I'm going to dip into the dip powder. Once the nail has been dipped, I'm going to tap away all of the excess dip powder. I'm then going to take the orange wood stick and using the pointy side, I'm going to draw around the cuticle line of the nail. This is going to perfect the cuticle area and make it as perfect as I can get. You do want to do that step before the dip powder has a chance to fully dry. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same step to all of the other nails. After that layer is dry, I'm going to take the fluffy nail brush and dust away all of the excess dip powder again. For the fourth and final layer of dip powder, I'm going to repeat the exact same step that I just previously done, applying the dip base to the entire nail, dipping the nail into the dip powder, and then removing any excess using the orange wood stick. How many layers of dip powder that you need to do just depends on the length of your nails. If you have very, very short nails, you do not need to build an apex with dip powder. You can get away with just doing two or three layers of dip powder. If you're doing nails longer than this, you may need to do more layers of dip powder to build the structure of your nails. After that layer is dry, I'm going to take the fluffy nail brush and dust away all of the excess dip powder again. For the next step, I'm going to be taking the activator, which is number 3, and I'm going to apply this very generously to all of the nails. Activator is an important step because it does harden the layers of dip powder and allow you to file and shape the nails. After the activator has fully dried, I'm going back with the hand file and I'm going to go over the shape of the almonds. Even though I pre-shaped the nails, you still need to go over the nail shape after the dip powder application. Sometimes doing the dip powder nails can alter the nail shape just a little bit, so doing this step will perfect your nail shape.
Then using the rougher side of the buffer, I'm going to buff over the surface of the nail very, very thoroughly. You do want to do this step very well to prevent having any lumps or ridges in your manicure. If your nails are very bumpy, you can use a hand file before buffing the nails. I'm going to go ahead and file and buff all of the other nails. After filing and buffing, I'm going to remove all of the excess nail dust from the nails. After removing the dust, you can then apply your dip top coat, which is number 4. Personally, as I said, I'm going to be using the No Wipe Gel Top Coat from the Premium Jelly Liquid Kit. I personally love this gel top coat. I love to finish my manicures with a gel top coat. It gives the nails a very beautiful shine and a very smooth surface. I'm going to go ahead and apply the gel top coat to all of the nails. After applying the gel top coat, I'm going to hold my hand upside down for a few seconds before I cure. This is going to give me a very smooth surface. I'm then going to cure the nails for one minute. After the nails are cured, I'm going to take the cuticle oil, which is number 6, and I'm going to apply this generously to all of the cuticles. It is really important to rehydrate your skin after all of your manicures. This cuticle oil is very hydrating and smells amazing. And here are the nails! I hope you guys enjoyed this very simple, beautiful almond manicure. If you want to see more videos, you can click the boxes or subscribe to Double Dip's YouTube channel by clicking the circle here. You can also subscribe to my personal YouTube channel by clicking the circle here.